Hello everybody, uh, this is Eric Beaver. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys the 1977 Toyota Chinook Pop Top Camper I restored over the past uh, one and a half years. Uh, we'll walk through everything. I'm sitting in it right now in the middle of a business complex on a Saturday. Uh, hundreds, maybe even thousands of parking spots to the left or right of me uh, and no cars in them. Uh, either way, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, let me step out of the vehicle here. Here's the driver's seat and passenger seat. Uh, the carpet and all the interior, the dash, uh, everything was replaced. So the dash is painted. Painted nice and uh, gray, a nice vinyl material here on the dash. Everything's a little bit dusty because I haven't cleaned it since I finished the project. Uh, the seats are out of some vehicle, I'm not sure which one, but they, uh, they bolt in nice. They don't look the greatest, but it's probably the worst looking thing on this rig. Um, go ahead and close the door. Here you can see it's uh, painted blue. I'll back up a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Uh, the truck cab is painted blue. Uh, the shell was painted white with a nice gray stripe. The reflection's kind of hard to see right now. The gray stripe goes all the way down the side. Uh, and then there's uh, another blue stripe that matches the, the front half of the vehicle. Uh, the pop, the roof does pop up. It pops up about um, two or three feet and it allows a uh, person around six foot four to walk through it, no problem. That's how tall I am. So the wheels are uh, from a Mazda car that I retrofitted to fit around the hubs. Uh, here's the front of the vehicle. Uh, nice and blue all the way around. It's the same blue color that's used on the uh, modern Mustangs. It's called Grabber Blue. Lift up the hood here. So engine's been completely redone. Uh, it's a 20 yard pretty reliable engine, carbureted, four cylinder, 2.2 liter. Uh, here is uh, the auxiliary, excuse me, this is the, the car battery, the one to start the engine, and this is the auxiliary battery for um, anything that's going on in the RV when the vehicle's not running. Close up the engine. Uh, down here is a carburetor, oil filter, fuel filter, a vacuum valve, windshield wipers, uh, brake booster, vacuum line hose. Uh, here's some electronics. This uh, relay here is to uh, connect the connect this battery to this battery uh, while a vehicle is running uh, to charge the coach battery. Um, here's some overflow tanks and washer fluid. Uh, you can see the exhaust manifold down on the side there. The distributor which is converted entirely into uh, electronic ignition. It doesn't use the points that come stock, um, and all that's required is the, uh, the ignition coil. Uh, there is an ignition module on the top, but that's not being used, it's just sitting there. Uh, that's it, it's entirely rebuilt. Here's a look down at the, uh, the serpentine belt and the fan. Uh, you see there's a few brackets here that don't have anything connected, and that's because to have a smog pump, uh, smog pump down here, and then I think this bracket was for uh, AC. Uh, this vehicle didn't have AC, so I think the engine had been swapped at some point. But yeah, that's it. Uh, the entire uh, inside here was originally white, uh, but it was repainted black to make it look a lot better. Um, so was the hood, underside of the hood. And uh, all the grill is original. Headlights original. Uh, down here you can see the turn signals also original. Um, I had a parts vehicle so it made it a little bit easier to uh, acquire parts. Uh, but underneath here uh, all, this, all the suspension components were replaced. Maybe kind of hard to see. But uh, new shocks, uh, new uh, rubber grommets on the sway bar bushings. Uh, brakes were replaced. All the steering components. So you can see the steering components are all brand new. Your pitman arm and
tie rod ends, everything brand new. Uh, you can see the oil pan down there is shiny, 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 uh, just freshly repainted. Uh, the transmission is the uh, stock transmission. Not much was done to that, just replaced the oil. Um, and then that's about it on driveline. Uh, and then down here is the uh, carrier bearing. Uh, it was also replaced along with all the U-joints on the drive shaft. You need to go all the way to the back. Uh, maybe it's better look at the other side here. Uh, the leaf springs were also replaced. Uh, and one leaf spring was added on each side for uh, extra weight support. So you can see those look relatively new. As, long, as well as the shocks and the rear brakes were also replaced. So let's start on the outside, uh, passenger side here. Uh, looks about the same from the other side. Uh, but this is it. Put that in focus. Uh, same wheels on the rear. Here's the gas cap. And the windows. So this window will slide over to that way and open up entirely. Uh, and here's a little side running light. Brake lights. There's a little uh, door stopper thing. little heater vent uh, from uh, when there was a heater there. There's no heater there. It's just covered now. A little handle on the side for getting in and out. The same uh, running light on this side. A little vent up here uh, also covered. Um, and on this side uh, here's a whole bunch of vents that were covered. The little three uh, three squares. The square there, square there, and square there. I guess the other one's more of a rectangle but those used to be water inlets and outlets, uh, but the water tank I have, which I will get to, is uh, doesn't use those inlets anymore. It's just removable. And this cover here has the propane tank in it. Um, so this is a horizontal propane tank, and it does require uh, finding finding one of these guys that's uh, recertified because they're not purchasable anymore you have to find old ones uh, but the way that it fit in this little cavity was perfect so I decided to stick with it uh, but an all propane regulator and then it splits off into a few different other devices uh, that are inside um, the fridge uh, the heater and uh, the what's the other thing the stove all run on propane uh, here are the fridge vents uh, the little thing right there to the right. It's just another little bit. I'm not really sure it was used for stock, but it's there. Uh, it doesn't go in anywhere either. Uh, the top is the top fridge vent and then lower fridge vent. So it'll suck in air from here, burn the propane and exhaust out the top. The top one isn't removable, but the bottom one you can open up. Um, and here's the wiring and the fridge. Oop. So the fridge runs on propane. There's a little switch right here to convert it over to, that would stay open. To convert it from 12 volts, uh, 115, 110 volt, or uh, propane. So right now this propane switch is off, so that would be turning the propane on, turning it off, putting it in 12 volt, 12 volt mode versus off versus 115 volt mode. But it's not on right now. switch to control the temperature, temperature, uh, and also the wiring for the AC and DC. It goes over here into the inside. Uh, that's about it for the outside. Uh, let me pop the top and then I will show you the outside popped. I don't want to cheat yet and show you guys the inside so I'm gonna put the camera down. roof popped up. It, like I said, it pops up about two or three feet, uh, but plenty of room to walk around on there. Uh, I'll just go ahead and walk around the whole thing just so you guys can get a overview. There are a few uh, torn uh, screen windows in the top of the canvas, and the front window here is actually unopenable. The zipper was broken in the canvas, so I just 
tape over it with vinyl material. And, but the screen in the back works and it's in pretty good shape. So there it is. Let me go ahead and uh, walk on inside. Oh, well, another thing is uh, the bumper. I'm not sure what it's from, but it's definitely not from this vehicle. Uh, it is very heavy. It probably weighs 115 pounds. Uh, and it was repainted the same color as the stripe, the gray silver stripe. This one. So I'll go ahead and walk in. So here's a little overview of it. Uh, the couch is on the right side and all the table and stuff is on the left. Uh, but we'll start from the rear. So this is the only cabinet that opens this way. Uh, it enables you to open it from the outside. Uh, just store things in here that are kind of I've never really used. Some basketball gear, uh, so a little extra storage unit, and a uh, battery charger. Uh, down below, uh, this is where the, all the electronics are. So there is a uh, power inverter, 1200 watt, um, that will convert the DC to AC and power all your electronic devices that run on um, a wall outlet. Uh, you can see that big, big honking wire. I think it's a six or four gauge wire. It goes all the way to the front uh, into the battery, the coach battery. Um, and then there's a fuse block uh, that powers, that also connects to that same battery and routes to all the electronic devices. Right now there's only three electronic devices. Um, I'll add more in the future, but just depending on uh, what I really need. Uh, the three devices are the fridge off of DC, which is really inefficient and will probably never be used. Uh, the sink pump and also some DC outlets. Uh, those outlets are right here. Um, so there's two uh, 110 volt AC outlets, 1200 watts max out of both. And then uh, two little cigarette lighters that you can plug in uh, car chargers or whatever you want. Uh, up in the top, uh, there's some storage. I uh, mostly just use this for toiletries. Uh, there's really not much in here except in the top bin. Um, and you can see the heater is actually mounted in this wall. Here's a propane for the heater and a door latch too to keep the doors closed when you're driving. Since I'm talking about the heater, might as well go ahead and explain that. Uh, this is a uh, Wave 6 catalytic. Uh, safety heater is what they call it and uh, it runs on propane and here's a little knob over here to turn it on you basically push it in and it leaks out propane and after a little while it primes it enough to press this button to start it uh, there's three different settings high low medium and then uh, over here is the uh, electronic switch to turn on the inverter um, so you can just press it, hold it for a second, it'll turn on, the green light means it's on, and then you hold it for a second, turn it off, now it's off. Uh, here's a view of the, the window from the inside, there's a zipper, you can undo it if you wish. Uh, here's the other cabinet. So this is where I keep all my clothes. It's laundry day, there's not much in there, so... Doing that right now. And on the bottom, there's some towels. Uh, tent and like I said, it's laundry day, so I don't have any laundry in here. That's where I keep my dirty laundry. Uh, I got a, uh, a fire and CO2 alarm detector here just to say safe. Um, and then we'll turn around and go look at here. So here's a sink uh, and a faucet. The faucet is linked uh, to an automatic switch or automatic pump that detects pressure so when you turn it on it just starts pumping out water and it stops once you uh, shut the uh, faucet off. There's one fork in there. Um, and down here is the uh, water tank. So it's a five gallon water tank. Um, it's removable so you can you can see it slides in and out here. Uh, but here's the here's the hose that goes in um, to suck the water out. Uh, down here there is a sliding plastic door and so you slide this open and you got a whole bunch of storage down here so here's a fan that i use a dc fan a little trash can uh, flip-flops uh, all the plumbing for the sink uh, the sink hose here will drain out to the bottom it just goes onto the ground 
uh, and then also got the Toyota pickup manual. And on the other side, I just got a whole bunch of kitchen stuff, and uh, on the right, and then some Cheetos and some tools on the left. And then over here, a little bit further, is the sink. So I'll put these blinds up here. These are just uh, temporary blinds. I'll get something more permanent later, but they work for the time being. You can hardly see in them at all, so, so they don't stay up very well. So here's a stove. It's a Flame King two burner stove. Uh, just turn it on, leaks propane out, light it with a match, um, and you can cook on it. Uh, these things remove, you can squeeze them and they come out so you can cook stuff. Haven't done much cooking on that, but I plan to. And down here is the Dometic 211 fridge. It opens from this side. It has uh, some stuff in there. Not much in here right now because it's, uh, it's not powered. So anything that's soilable can't be in here. Uh, it's some bush light there for you guys. Um, and on this side over here, there is a, it's kind of hard to see here, but there's some storage shelves in here on um, the top and bottom, a little bit of drinking water. Um, and there's a cab from the inside. You can step in between here if you're small enough. I can do it. Um, and here I just have some storage stuff, a little towel for showering and then on the front uh, there is a little area above the cab that I store things this uh, this truck doesn't drive fast enough to knock anything down so most of the stuff just uh, stays up there when you drive uh, but I got a body pillow and a light lights really useful lights up the entire cabin to different brightnesses at night um, all my electronic stuffs uh, temperature gauge and wires and some change and stuff there's my backpack I use for uh, showers. And uh, the window's on this side too. I'll just show you the window on this side because the curtain's up. So maybe it's up. Uh, so you pull this little lever here and then you just slide it over and the window's open up really nice and wide. I don't have any screen doors on there because they were broken. Uh, I might get them eventually, but the bugs aren't too bad here in Portland, so it's not a big deal. Um, all right, now the only thing left is the couch. So uh, we got a few things on here. I'll move it off. So I'm gonna try to set this down so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Uh, maybe I'll just try to do it one-handed. Uh, so the cushions on the rear of the couch here, you can just remove them. Usually set them over here. This whole couch folds out. It's a, it's a couch from the Alpha Sia. Uh, fancy fancy pants motor home. I usually just put these uh, cushions over here when I sleep. And then the side things here, side armrests, they, they fold up. Some on the other side, and this one's not gonna stay up because there's something to hold it, but and then you grab then you grab the bottom cushion and you just lift it up. And it kind of looks like another couch now, but uh what you do now is you grab it right down here and you just lift up and it jackknifes into an entire bed. Like that. So now you can sleep in it. Uh, this, this area here will fold down. Let me lay on it real quick. Kind of stuck up against the wall. But you can lay on that no problem. Uh, it'll sleep too. It's fairly comfortable. Uh, a little bit higher on the right side, but it doesn't really bother me. Well, that's it, that's a couch. You can, I also usually have a sheet on here, but like I said, it's laundry day. So I can fold it on up again, and it just jackknifes right into place. Um, another thing is, is there's uh, some storage underneath here. Got most of my winter gear under here. Things I haven't really used yet. Robe, jacket, some more sheets. And it folds down like that. Well, that's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you can read more about 
um, all the details on my post online. I'll link it in the description. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.